What are some good ideas for no-code SaaS apps? I want to guide you through this today because previously launching a SaaS app, which is a software as a service, that was really only done by well-funded startups because of the complexity that's often involved. But because of no-code tools, everyday entrepreneurs without technical skills can be launching SaaS apps and building really valuable companies for themselves. And so I want to talk through today some different ways you can come up with SaaS app ideas and make sure you stick around until the end because I also have a bonus idea that I want to guide you through that we see a lot of our own clients doing as well. So stick around for that. Now, first, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. So let's dive right into this. How can you come up with good SaaS app ideas? Well, in reality, if you think about all of the spreadsheet processes that you use today, those are kind of like the foundational pieces of a SaaS app. And so instead of just trying to come up with a SaaS idea, it's helpful to actually look at the processes that you yourself use today, or maybe people who you know use that are based around spreadsheets, and then build a SaaS app idea upon the really the, the premise or the purpose of that spreadsheet. So I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to go over to the whiteboard because I want to walk you through what this can look like. So when when companies are just starting out, and you can think about your own company if you already have one, or just any company in general, usually we're going to start out with no actual systems in place, okay? So in other words, there are you know products, potentially a product or services, uh, information when a company launches, uh, potentially some team, but often just a solo founder if it's a smaller company, but no real systems, meaning a business actually has to start operating in order to build out their systems and then optimize their systems. And so a lot of times when, especially when solo entrepreneurs or maybe co-founders are launching a, a small business, most of it really just lives in their heads, right? You might have ex experienced this before, um, but generally there's no hard systems in place. But as a company starts to build up traction and uh, bring in customers, start having more sales and start having more things that need to be done, uh, a, a higher scale of marketing, a higher scale of customer support, for example, things like that, well, then the systems do start to develop because the only way to really grow a business is to create repeatable processes. Otherwise, the business is always going to, to stay small. And so for businesses that grow, that's when the systems start to develop. And oftentimes, these are what I'm going to call sheet systems. So this is where spreadsheets come into play. Now, it's not always spreadsheets, but often it is. If you've grown your own business, you know this, you're probably very, very comfortable or familiar working with spreadsheets right now, um, or, or you have been. But oftentimes, the, there's really just a, a requirement. If the company wants to continue growing and scaling, the systems have to be created because things have to be repeatable to facilitate the scale. Repeatable systems means that you can uh, potentially have the same size of team, but a higher volume of customers. Or repeatable systems mean that you can start hiring more team members and, and outsourcing and taking the things that you're currently doing as the founder, potentially, and having other people do them. So now you can shift your focus to um, you know, more profitable activities, more revenue generating activities. So the systems start to be built out. And these are often spreadsheet systems because they're easy to get started with and often very cheap or free. And so uh, spreadsheets are often the, the first thing that people go to. Now, spreadsheets, spreadsheet systems, examples of these. So, and kind of foreshadowing what we're gonna talk about, potential SaaS app ideas, right? The spreadsheet systems that 
I can think about just off the top of my head um, can be things like, you know, tracking Facebook leads for marketing. So if you have people join a Facebook group or people who are interacting on a company Facebook page, maybe you're tracking information about those people and you're putting that into a spreadsheet so that you can then use the data maybe for sales purposes or maybe for additional marketing purposes, right? Um, and, and to that point, tracking marketing data, right? So in any form, pulling data from any, any marketing channel that you have, uh, pulling data from your YouTube channel, pulling data from, you know, an event that you host or an event that you join and you speak at, um, anyone you connect with, putting data into a spreadsheet from that. So just any type of marketing data you could possibly think of. Also, you know, managing customers in tons of different ways. Obviously, there's, there's lots of software for customer relationship management, but maybe on a smaller scale. Again, we're talking about this sheet system stage, maybe managing customers outside of just email management, like you might find in active campaign or, or something like that. Um, maybe managing some information that you get from customers. Maybe you survey your customers and you want to pull in information and use that data to, you know, tweak one of the services that you have, right? Things like that. You can use sheet systems for that. You can use sheet systems for training your team. When you're initially hiring out a team, it's really common to build out training for them on spreadsheets and to have them essentially onboarded into a company using a series of spreadsheets. I mean, you can build full courses on spreadsheets if you want to when you're, you know, when you're just starting out. And obviously reporting, right? I mean, I'm just kind of spitballing ideas here, but you can see, and if you really start to think about all the different processes that you personally do, it doesn't have to be in your own business if you don't have your own business currently. Think about in your job. What processes do you do in your job that involve spreadsheets? Probably a, a, a good amount, okay? So these are just some initial sort of, examples really, not even ideas right now, but just examples of what sheet systems means. Now, the thing is sheet systems come with some drawbacks, right? For one, even though they are better than having these systems live in your head, oftentimes they're manual to some extent. There is some manual labor involved in using these sheets. You can get fancy with your sheets, um, but some compromises usually still come with that. You know, maybe you take your sheets and you start using Zapier and other apps, but regardless, there's still some manual work involved. And going back to what I just said, that often means compromising. Just compromises on how you can use the data, compromises on what you can actually turn into functionality if you are using something like Zapier, for example, because it's not just limitless and, and endless in terms of the options you have. So usually if you're using sheets, there's some sort of compromise. You're not gonna be able to dig quite as much as you want. You're not gonna be able to automate exactly what you want. Right? So really what, the, what we're looking at is a lack of custom functionality. Okay, when you're using these spreadsheet systems. So they are a lot better than having no systems, right? Having sheet systems is like that first level up where now you need them, but we're still dealing with some drawbacks. So this is where it gets interesting <laughs> for the purpose of what we're talking about here. When you want to scale beyond that, this is where you start looking more into app solutions. Okay, so when you want to scale beyond the sheet systems, usually what's happening are a few different things. I, I mean, lots of different things could be going on, but things that could be prompting the scale and needing to move away from the sheet solutions is the founder or you know, the founders, if there's co-founders, um, they could be in 
too many ops processes. Okay, this is what often happens. The solo founder or the co-founders, as they scale, they are just in way too many operational processes. And really their bandwidth is just too full to think about growth opportunities and to think about scale opportunities. And so they need to start offloading a lot of these operational processes, which are those sheet systems oftentimes, right? And to go along with this, or just in addition to this, oftentimes it's just team growth, right? The more team you have, oftentimes the less efficient and effective those sheet systems become, okay? Just because, again, when you scale, you need not just more automation, but you need more customization. You need to be optimizing your business and your operations and your systems in more ways than just what a spreadsheet will allow for. You need to be able to spend less time in spreadsheets and more time in really your, your, you know, your zones of genius. You need to be able to pull yourself and your team as it grows out of the operations a little bit more and start automating some of these things. And on top of that, and, and this all goes hand in hand, but customer growth, right? The more customers you have, the more inefficient sheet systems become if you are using them in relation to your customer base. So really just the growth, the growth and the growth in operations and the, the hours and the time and the focus that is spent on operations when all of these things are happening, it becomes too much. And so really in order to continue on this upward trajectory, we now need app solutions, okay? And this is where you can start to, going back to the, the, the topic of this video of coming up with these, these SaaS app ideas, well, it, it really revolves around this stage right here. So if you can identify the sheet systems out there, in the ways that app solutions can enable this upward trajectory, well, now you have the foundation of some potentially really valuable SaaS app ideas. And you don't have to be a really, you know, well-funded startup to now outsource your development, outsourcing, you know, $200,000, $300,000 for the initial MVP to come up with this app solution because you can use no-code tools and you can build these app solutions yourself. And when you do this, when you start having app solutions instead of sheet systems, what that allows you to really do is optimize your business or optimize businesses in the industry that your app is actually for, that your app caters to, you're going to be able to create more scalable, not just businesses, but operations. So you can actually grow the customer base. You can actually grow the team and those operations will be able to support the team because now you have an app, app solution versus a sheet system, which we know is not necessarily the best um, it's not necessarily the best solution for growing businesses. And you can actually create uh, fully automated solutions. With a spreadsheet, it's so much better than having those systems live in your head. So much better, speaking from personal experience. But as you scale, it's so, so much better having those app solutions, because now you can fully automate things. Now you can fully customize things. Now you can optimize better. You know, when you're building your own app solution, you can build it however you want. That means that in all the ways that sheet systems don't let you customize, in all the ways you're having to compromise with those sheet systems, well, you can do away with those and you can build whatever the heck you want into your no-code SaaS app. Okay, so this, obviously this video is not about just giving you a bunch of SaaS app ideas. It's giving you a foundation for how to think about the ways 
valuable SaaS companies can be created and to think about what you can start looking at in your business, in, in your job, in your life that revolves around sheets. And you can think about, okay, for anything that wants to scale, that's currently based on a sheet system, well, how can I create an app to allow that scale? That's really what you, what you want to think. Of. Now, I mentioned a bonus uh, way that you can start to think about these SaaS app ideas. And what we see a number of people doing, which is really interesting to think about, is for the entrepreneurs who do have existing businesses, and we see a number of our own clients doing this, they are taking their own sheet systems that are really holding them back from scaling to where they want to be. They're creating their own app solutions, again, to enable this scale for their own businesses. But because they know that their own business needs this app solution and their niche industry needs the app solution, they're then able to build the product for their own companies, test the product, actually integrate it into their own systems, validate it, optimize the product, and then package that product up and sell it to other businesses like theirs down the road. And what's really cool about this is that it can create a, a new revenue stream, right? So additional revenue onto the business or really just a new business in and of itself. You know, a lot of people when they um, when they do this type of thing, it opens up a brand new opportunity of potentially an entirely new business model as well. And so I wanted to touch on that one because it's not just about thinking of app solutions for other businesses or app solutions, even just for your own business. It could be both, right? It can be both. So there's a lot of opportunity here as a non-technical entrepreneur or someone who's just using no-code tools to create SaaS apps that come from um, that come from something that's already validated. A sheet system is already validated because it's being used. So it's not just a random idea. It's something that you really have a foundation for. So I hope this is helpful for you in thinking about ways that you can um, create your own SaaS app idea. Now, if you are wanting to build a custom SaaS app yourself by leveraging no-code tools, or maybe you've already started and you want to make sure you're doing it correctly. We have a free workshop that goes through some initial critical stages in building an app correctly and strategically using no-code tools. And you can join in on that for free. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. And it'll take you through these initial stages. So if you're just starting out, it's really important to Make sure you're moving forward strate strategically, or if you are already starting out, it's going to help you validate those initial steps that you've taken, or maybe take a few steps back, but better to do that earlier on than before you get too far. So you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to head to that. All right. I hope you found this uh, useful and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.